Hello everyone and welcome back to the garden. I am on my way down to the tomato bed to harvest a couple tomatoes because we're getting a lot of rain and I don't want them to split. And I thought I would take you along with me and just talk a little bit about some of the varieties that I've had ripe so far, what I think of them. What are some of my favorites so far? And things like that. And I'm also going to be announcing the winner of the giveaway in today's video. But so that you watch the entire video, instead of putting the winner at the beginning or the end, I'm just going to randomly announce the winner somewhere throughout this video. Now, if you haven't been following along, these tomatoes, let me put the basket down. These tomatoes I had to plant, I had to replant a couple times this year because I kept getting some kind of disease. I think it was either a curly top virus or tobacco mosaic virus. So I am just now starting to get a lot of tomatoes rolling in. So there are some here uh, growing that I haven't even harvested the first ones off of yet this season. But there are certainly some in here that are absolutely massive and I cannot wait to weigh a couple of them to see how much they weigh. I've been trying for several years to grow one pound or actually I want to grow a two pound tomato but I haven't even grown a one pound tomato yet and you know it it took me a while to realize that you have to have a variety that has those genetics you know you can't just pick and grow any old tomato and expect it to get you know to a huge size. If we come on over to this first one we've got a massive beef steak here that hasn't even began to blush yet and it's larger than my hand we've got some smaller ones and I planted these in a rainbow pattern you can't really tell just standing here but as we walk down you'll see that I have reds that go into oranges to greens and then I stuck a white a couple whites and then uh, we have some blues down at the end. And I planted basil and marigolds in between every other tomato. So we have a tomato, a basil, a tomato, a marigold, a tomato, a basil, a tomato, a marigold. There were a couple that didn't germinate and I reseeded them and most of them germinated the second time, but there were a few that uh, didn't and I never reseeded the second time. And that was just my fault from not keeping them wet enough in order for them to germinate. But if we come down in here, we've got lots of Matt's wild cherries that are ripe. This is a really, really productive plant. Here we have a, we have a, let me think. I believe this one is either beefsteak or delicious. And then we have, I'll put it up on the screen. I can't remember, but I know that delicious beefsteak and I think a red pear were the first three before getting to the Matt's Wild Cherry. Then next we have our striped Roma with tons of fruit. Unfortunately, something has chewed on quite a number of these, so I definitely need to get the ones that have been chewed on out of here. Look at this massive. It's actually broken because of the weight of it. Yeah, see we have some splitting on these sun golds and we've got some fruit flies back here. So definitely want to harvest as many of these as we can before we get too much, too much uh, more splitting. Now let's stop for a moment and talk about these sun golds. So it's hard to tell which is which, but I have a couple main branches of sun golds 
and then we have quite a few suckers that grew and I tried my best to stay on top of it but these varieties that I grew this year are some of them are so stinking productive that I could not stay on top of it if you watched my recent garden chore video where I came out and for three days I just tackled all of the gardens and just did all the things that needed to be done uh, I pruned all of these tomatoes to where they each only had two to three stems I tied them all to the cattle panel trellis and I pruned off all of their suckers and within five days they looked like this again <laughs> like it, it's just crazy the amount and the speed that these have been growing so I just I have not been able to keep up with pruning the suckers off of these and the cut flower gardens and the landscape gardens and the vegetable gardens but if you look here we have just tons of sun golds coming on this plant so number one it is super productive and number two these are the best tasting cherry tomatoes i have ever had now at first i didn't want to get my hopes up because when i grew japanese black trifel a lot of people said that it's the best tomato you'll ever eat it's you know so much better than just your ordinary red beef steak so when i tried it i was pretty disappointed now granted they could have been overwatered because we get so much rain and that could have been why so i did grow them again this year to give them another shot but i didn't want to get my hopes up with the sun gold but let me tell you whenever you put one of these in your mouth it's like literal candy it does not even taste like a tomato it does smell like a tomato it has an extremely strong tomato smell oddly but it does not taste like a tomato which I love my tomatoes that taste like tomatoes, but I also love my sweet cherry tomatoes. If we keep on moving down, you can see we have some amazing basil. I've been cutting these really hard, but I've left a few to grow, uh, to, to go to seed so that I can uh, harvest their seeds. This particular basil is lemon basil and it smells so, so good. I planned on trying lots of recipes with this this year and it just unfortunately didn't happen but it's amazing in cut flower arrangements i've had customers ask me what did i spray on my bouquets because they just couldn't believe that it smelled so good but down here we have some massive massive dr witchies Now these are so large because they are from two uh, blooms that have like fused together. It's called cat facing if you don't know. So there will probably be a large uh, portion of these tomatoes that I have to cut off uh, because where the blossom ends meet, it's usually, I don't know how to explain it, but it's usually doesn't look, you know, the most appetizing. Um, so I'll probably have to cut a lot of that out of the bottom where the blossoms met we have some up here that are still haven't even began to blush yet that's what i was talking about with the you know where the blossoms where the uh, blossom ends meet sorry i couldn't get that to focus but next we have our berries crazy cherry and let me tell you this plant is it's crazy look at the truss of tomatoes here this is one truss that goes off into a V but it's one truss of tomatoes from there all the way over to here and then we have a sucker beginning to grow right there but I mean just look at that it looks like a lot of these blossoms are getting ready to fall off and maybe they didn't get pollinated I'm not sure um, when you see them turning yellow like that when you see them turning yellow like that and browning and falling off that's usually because they didn't get pollinated something that you can do to make sure you have fruit is to just come out and just shake the uh, the plant and that will get the pollen to kind of shake around in there and it should ensure that you have tomatoes growing in a few days. But let's take a look at these other 
I don't even think I'm gonna be able to reach it without damaging these. But we have some ripe Berry's Crazy Cherry down here behind this marigold. Let me see if I can get in here. Do you guys see that? I haven't tried I haven't tried any of these yet. Those are the first ones to ripen. Same with the Dr. Witchies or Dr. Wikes. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But those are two that I'm also really excited to try. And then moving down here, it looks like one of my strings must have broken because this was tied up. I believe this one is the white cherry. We're supposed to have an evergreen first though. I'll just have to put on the screen what, what this is. I'll have to go back to my notes because I think that's white cherry and that's evergreen. Let me go back just really quickly and talk about these marigolds actually. So these marigolds are petite yellow and petite orange and they're only they were only supposed to have gotten eight inches tall. I said in one of my last videos that they were only supposed to get like 12 to 18 inches, I thought. But after I went back and looked at the package, it was actually only supposed to get eight inches tall. So, I mean, just look at that. And that's only a couple months of growth because like I said, I had to keep pulling these tomatoes and replanting them. So, I mean, that's just, that's just crazy. Look at this beautiful basil. It's just so gorgeous and it smells so good. I just wish you guys could smell it. Hopefully you all have grown it before and you know what I'm talking about. Look how tall it is. This has fallen over because of all the rain, but look how tall that is. Let me step back and show you. I mean, that's a good three and a half, maybe pushing four foot tall. Next, we have our blue berry, or I'm sorry, blue beauties, and they are so beautiful. We have our blue beauty, and then we have our blue berries. And they are so gorgeous. Now, these blueberries, I've not really gotten a chance to give them a true taste test yet because the only ones uh, that I was able to try were ones that were ripe right after about three days straight of rain and so since they were you know obviously very very overwatered, they didn't have the greatest taste so I'm gonna harvest the ones that are ripe today and hopefully they haven't gotten too much rain yet and Hopefully they will have a better taste. But honestly, they're so beautiful. I would grow them even if they didn't taste good. Maybe it's just because they're blue and it's so, you know, abnormal for a tomato. But I just think they're so gorgeous. I would grow them regardless. sun is beginning to come out so I apologize there's gonna be some harsh shadows but I have to quickly get this done before my husband comes back with the kids or I'm not gonna be able to get this video filmed for you guys so I apologize but I'm gonna go grab my tripod and we're gonna get started harvesting some of these tomatoes on my way back to the house I'll just quickly show you the fenced perennial cut flower garden what it's looking like my husband helped me get a ton of weeds pulled in this bed and plants pulled out of this bed. Oh, he was such a huge help. It would have taken me weeks to get that done, but he came in here and knocked it out in a couple hours. Sorry, I'm getting chewed up by mosquitoes, so sorry if I'm jerking the camera. But because of all of the overgrown plants in this bed, some of the foliage from the peonies died back. So I'm hoping that after we go through this winter that they come back fresh. I'm not sure this is my first time uh, growing any peonies. They've also got some signs of fungal issues and things like that going on. So 
I'm hoping that in year two we at least get a couple blooms to at least see what varieties these are because these were both mixes. I did film a video planting these if you want to check that out on my channel. But if you remember, we had brassicas down the center. We had a ton of huge, huge sunflowers back here. We've got some dahlias. Some of them have already been pulled, but we still have a couple. We have one blooming right now, actually. It's laid over. The stem isn't usable. But man, is it gorgeous. That one is fairway spur. Same with this one. These are just some random irises that my neighbor gave me when I first purchased this house. Those are just some red zinnias that need to get pulled. I've put landscape fabric over here to try to prevent some of the weeds. Here is the little Lysianthus patch that I had that I'm attempting to collect seeds from it. And if you are obsessed with Lysianthus like I am, make sure you hit that subscribe button because this year I am growing tons and tons of varieties. I'm going to be experimenting with so many colors and varieties this coming year. So they have groups one through four that all flower at different periods of the year. Um, I'm going to be experimenting with lots of uh, different groups like that to try to extend my harvest of Lysianthus as long as possible because I am just obsessed with them and I just, I just love them. And if you didn't watch my last video, these didn't get harvested. So I'm thinking that's why they didn't send up any um, side shoots and send up a second flush. But these that I harvested, the um, Echo Blues and the Dublini Whites and the Arena Apricot, those uh, I harvested and it sent up a second flush, which is so exciting. I did not know that they did that. And then I just threw a bunch of random things after the ranunculus was done blooming. Uh, we've got marigolds and zinnias and uh, we had some tomatoes that volunteered. And then these are the two vegetable beds that I am currently working on pulling everything out of except for the herbs and the tomatoes. And then if we pan over here, you can see this was my more recent succession of zinnias. You can see that there is some powdery mildew and browning and spotting. But overall, they look a whole lot better than the ones over here on this other side. Because it's not very hot, the morning glories haven't completely closed up. Try not to make you guys sick by going too fast. So here are the other zinnias. You can see that they are very sickly looking. Sorry if I'm going too fast, but I just want to quickly walk around the back here and show what the remaining crops are looking like. I'm just going to step through this bed. So it's hard to tell, but there's a, a bed right here that had lots of different successions in it of scabiosa, calendula, bells of Ireland, cress, bachelor's buttons, things like that. Some of them did well, some of them didn't. And then this bed here, there's a train coming one second. So while the train went by, I ran to get my tripod. So now we are back and I just want to quickly show you these remaining beds. I'm not going to go over every single thing that was planted in all of these beds and what's still planted and things like that just because I don't want this video to get too, too long. But I just want to quickly show you some of the things that are still here and what they are looking like. Here is the basil. I had basil, cosmos, and honeywort. Um, then I put 
in the back of all of these, I put frosted explosion grass. And then in behind there, I put a row of gladiolus. That is a bag full of weeds from over there. You should definitely check out that garden chore video that I mentioned earlier. Especially if your gardens are out of control with weeds. I really think that that would motivate you. Now here we had amaranth in the very back of both of these beds. And then we had a few different successions of things like amobium, um, straw flowers, calendula. We've got the salvia just now blooming. And it's gorgeous, I must say. It comes out this white and then turns this dark blue and that's a true blue now this little patch right here had the thinnest amount of compost and so it was extremely difficult to control the weeds here this entire cut flower garden was a no dig cut flower garden that I built this winter literally in the middle of winter we were out here in the snow shoveling compost I just wanted to quickly mention, if you do a no-dig garden bed, make sure you do the full six inches of compost on top of the cardboard because there really is a difference in the weeds in the areas that didn't get a full six inches. And then this is just the center where I planned to do cattle panel trellises throughout the entire center, but we only uh, got this one put up and then on this side I had planted more zinnias and sunflowers but a rain a storm washed them away and I never reseeded this was my little celosia patch and then I had lots of different things in this bed also wow that's a huge bee The bees and wasps, it's so hard to say that word on camera for some reason. They have just loved the celosia for some reason. So this bed here was extremely, extremely overtaken with weeds. Actually, both of the walkways were also. And in that video, we, in that garden chore video I was uh, mentioning, we took care of all of those weeds, but unfortunately all of the seed heads had already formed and were falling out. So that's why we have a million little baby weed seedlings in this bed. This is something that I'm going to try to take care of today before they get too large of roots and then they're too difficult to take care of. And then if we come back around here. We have our Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. This is just two plants. It is massive and it's gorgeous. I will definitely be planting a few seeds of this to put in the flower beds next year. It looks just like a Japanese maple. It's absolutely gorgeous. All right, so we are going to start harvesting some of these tomatoes, but I think now is a good time to announce the winner of the giveaway. So the winner of this giveaway, which if you don't remember, it is for a pair of snips. It's for a garden marker and then a selection of seeds from my seed stash. And the winner is going to be Amy Schmelzer. Congratulations, Amy. I know that you've been a subscriber for a while now, and I greatly appreciate it. You're always watching my videos and liking and commenting so thank you so much amy and congratulations and if your name is not amy then don't worry i am doing a ton of seed saving right now everything that you just seen in the garden most of those things i will be saving seeds from if not all of those things and i will definitely be doing another giveaway for seeds very soon
wanted to harvest the whole truss of tomatoes to get one of those beautiful pictures you see on Instagram where they are like an ombre effect. Darn it. pruned off just a little bit off of a few of these plants so that we could have a better look at these tomatoes and so that I can harvest them a little more easily. Isn't that crazy how many tomatoes are on that one truss? Oh man. Ah, that stinks. That's what happens though sometimes with these heirlooms, you know, hybrids are bred to have, you know, uniformity and things, you know, things like that so that they look good for grocery stores. Heirlooms, you know, um, not so much that uniformity and crack resistance and things like that that the hybrids do. But these other two are nearly perfect. There's a couple little bumps and bruises. Probably just from stems hitting against them. And there's a little bit of cat facing, but no bug damage that I can see. Can't wait to taste these. rigged it to try to keep it up you know hoping that it would get enough moisture to at least ripen the fruit that was on it and I can't even tell that it split because it's growing so well coming along with me and taking a quick look at the gardens and harvesting my first large harvest of the season actually. I'm sorry I did not get to go into too much detail on the varieties and which ones I liked and things like that. I am running out of battery, I'm running out of daylight, and I'm running out of memory. So I will have to save that for another video. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and congratulations again to the winner. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already to follow along and I will see you in the next one. They've moved now, but I forgot to harvest the Romas, so I just came over to harvest them, and these two very large grasshoppers were right here on the tomato, and I literally grabbed them, and it scared me half to death. So sick. Oh, 
I did it! Oh my gosh! Yay! <laughs>